Welcome back to the channel. This is not a Jeep, but it's a vehicle, so it counts. And it's made by Fiat slash Dodge Stellantis Grand. I don't really know who the hell makes this thing. Um, this is our new shop truck. I got rid of the old shop truck, sold to a friend of mine. Picked this up, brand new. It's got a couple thousand miles on it now. There's a few things I don't like, and one thing, is, one thing that I think we should maybe be concerned with. One, these tires are absolute garbage. We'll zoom in here and show you here in a minute. This is a really good example of the lowest bitter winds. These are Firestone Transforce AT, and they're absolutely trash. Garbage tires. I've never had a tire so bad that I got stuck in my parking lot, not even trying to go up the hill. Uh, my last Dodge, I don't know what happened. I, I had Toyos on it, and they were amazing. They worked out sweet, and with a diesel, I could just literally drive through all sorts of crap, and I had no problems. Uh, these heavier diesel trucks are really heavy in the front, or light in the rear, so they can be tire finicky. So even though these tires only got 2,000 miles, I can't handle it. I have to haul a trailer south coming really soon here. I'm just not confident in it. So I'm ditching them. We'll sell them. I'll donate them to somebody. I really don't care. This is what we're to go with. It's Falcon Wild Peak AT3. The tread design, we'll zoom in on this. It's got open lugs. It's a great all-terrain style tire. It's aggressive for an all-terrain, which I'm good with. And uh, we'll zoom in here. You can see this style here. Closed shoulder, just a piece of crap tire. Absolutely hate them. So we did go to a bigger tire. Uh, not quite a full 35. I may eventually put a small lift on the front of this. Uh, I've been checking out that rock crawler lift. So I may eventually go like the rock crawler lift. I don't really want to do a spacer. I'd like an adjustable track. There's a few things i got to sort out there. Um, rock cars are a pretty kick, kick buck company, so we might go that route. But I don't want to deal with it today, and i got to hurry up and get tires on. i got a trip I need to take. So we're going to slam a tire on us. We're going to see if this bigger tire, how much it fits. Then i got something we need to install under the hood because I think Chrysler dropped the ball on something that we need to fix ahead of time. So let's, let's check this out. So there you go, we got the tires installed. Is it a huge difference? Nope. Does it look drastic? Nope. It's not what I was going for. I have big, huge vehicles. This one just has to drive every day and do work. So at least now it won't get stuck in a wet driveway, which literally that's what the last tires did. I got stuck at the hardware store. I had to put it in four wheel drive to get out of the driveway in like maybe a quarter inch of snow. They were worthless. So I like that the uh, there's no white walls now, white letters, and we always have a snowstorm coming, so it's a great way to just excuse buying a new set of tires. I'll put the old ones up on eBay, or not eBay, uh, Facebook Marketplace. We'll be able to yeah. sell them for a few bucks. But we have something different to do now. All right, next on the list. And this list is going to continue. There's going to be an evolution of this truck on this channel because I can't leave anything alone, let alone my last truck was really built. We had a lot of motor work done to it. Uh, the transmission had a lot of billet internals, a lot of good internals, had a super awesome clutch, or uh, torque converter. And I can tell you right now, the one thing I do not like about this truck, the stock trans. It's garbage. It's like a slush box. There are an enormous amount of reports of people having transmission issues online. Mine shifts kind of funky. Granted, like, I don't know, it's got a warranty. What is it, Eric? Five year, 100,000, 560? I think 560. I think it's irrelevant. I don't care about warranties. I avoid warranties every day. Uh, so I'm going to run it until the trans actually starts to get problems and I don't have faith in that. And the 68 trannies that are in these Dodges are not notorious for being super strong. They can be made to be awesome. My last one in my last truck was amazing, was super amazing. So I will make this one awesome, just not today. But there's a small problem with these trucks that we've just been made aware of. I've not had a problem with it. 
We got a hold of a company called ATS Diesel Performance because there is a recall slash bulletin, whatever you want to call it, on these transmissions. I'm unsure of what's causing the problem, but they're spewing transmission fluid out of the dipstick and then it hits the turbo and exhaust and everything catches the trucks on fire. Again, mine's not done it. I've not even seen one do it, but I've got a huge cross country trip coming up and be towing the whole way. This is not the correct fix for this. There's a problem with the transmission. Chrysler needs to, Ram needs to identify the problem. They need to put out a fix for it. They don't even have one out. So this goes where the dipstick tube is and it seals the dipstick tube and the dipstick so that it can't spew fluid out of there. It'll divert it to this hose wherever we tell it to take it to. It's kind of a band-aid, let's be honest. This is a band-aid. But if you cut your finger off, don't you use band-aids? So I mean, there's a reason for a band-aid. We're gonna use this as a band-aid because it's what it is. And we're gonna use it until the real fix comes out from Ram and then we'll let them fix it under warranty. And then we'll put this back on anyways, just cause it's cheap insurance and I already bought. I can guarantee you in the near future, this thing will get a full billet transmission with all the good internals. We'll do good clutches and steels, good torque converter. Um, might replace the valve body, might just upgrade the valve body like I did my last truck that worked out really well. So for today, let's install a band-aid so we can take a trip. So right here is where the dipstick tube is. We took the dipstick out. We are going to take this beautiful device and we're going to basically slide it on there like that. So once you've got it slid on, you can see it has some set screws. We're going to get the set screws installed and get it adjusted in the location we want. Once it's in orientation, then we can take this hose. We're going to route it way down below and away from everything that's hot. And then we're going to zip tie it up. Then you just clip your that little thing, movie movies. Oh, that's so cute. Then we'll put our dipstick in. We uh, remarked the dipstick where the new full spot will be. And they call it the ATS Doomsday Device. They say on their uh, little YouTube video that it's the cheapest thing that they make in all of their product line, but it might save you the most amount of money. Again, I feel it's a bandit because there's a bigger issue to be dealt with, but we'll deal with that when we build us a new trans. So for today, that's what that is. You just slide on, tighten the set screws, run your hose away from everything hot, zip tie it up, throw your dipstick in. Shouldn't even have to adjust levels or nothing because it should already be full before you do this. Then hook on a trailer, go drive the damn thing, go use it like a truck. Till then, appreciate you guys hanging out. We'll see you next week. I know the video will not be on this next week because I don't want to work on this thing every week. And we have Jeeves to finish. So we'll see you then.